I really wish this was clickbait, but it's not. This actually happened. It was just typical that this was gonna happen to me. I'd said it in one of my Instagram stories and I just knew something like this was gonna happen. But anyway, today's the video. I got a new car. I finally did it. I made the plunge and I bought a new car. But before I jump into what the car is, I'm gonna just talk to you guys what led up to me buying this particular car. So please stick around, don't skip into the video because trust me, this is a very entertaining video. I, yeah, I'm gonna go into detail about what made me buy that car, what happened when I bought the car, and the other cars I looked at as well. So let's just start right back at the beginning. So a few months back, I didn't really decide, it was just sort of on and off my mind that I, I want a new car, but I don't wanna get rid of the Mark IV and I don't really have the money to buy a car and there's a lot of cars that I have to choose from so that's why I started that series and I took you guys with me and we test drove some cars that's still going on I'm still going to be doing that just because I I've, it's fun bringing you guys with me and just driving them in general it's you know it's a fun thing to do it must have been about two weeks two months ago we had we had a really sunny spell some time in England and for one week it was it was like 25 degrees or something stupid it was basically summer for a week and that made me really want a convertible. And last year, summer, I said to myself, I want to get like a Mark, like a cheap convertible, like a Mark III Golf, Mark IV Golf, or an Audi, or something that I can just have fun with for like a month and then get rid of it. That didn't happen. It then got really cold and I just forgot about it. Summer, last month or like two months ago, made me really want a convertible again. So I started looking into cheap convertible cars and I found one probably about 10 miles away. It was a Mark III convertible for, it must have been like 500 pounds. But the thing that scared me was that, yeah, it would be fun to have for, for the time having it, but it wasn't really a car that I could build with you guys. If I was to buy a car for 500 pounds, I wouldn't want to put any money into it. And again, it wouldn't be worth much when I come to sell it. So I decided not to go with that. So after that, I, I was then thinking, okay, so if I so if I want a convertible, what car would I want? And I, was, and I was thinking, but with my price range, I want to keep it familiar. The obvious answer is the Audi TT. It looks a bit girlyish, but it's got a 1.8 turbo, uh, 225 brake horsepower engine, and it's obviously Quattro. I found one, not too far away, uh, went to visit it, and on the outside it looked really nice, minus the small dent that it had. It was in a nice blue as well, which is my favorite color, just because of my first Golf that I had was this really nice pearlescent blue. Uh, yeah, anyway, so it was that color. Before going, I looked on the MOT history, and it said the last MOT failed on corroded brakes, corroded rear brakes, corroded springs, and then I scrolled even further down. One MOT said corroded underbody, or something to do with rusty underbody, and then the next one, there wasn't any. Obviously, someone's probably tried to hide it. When I viewed this car, I opened up the bonnet and the first thing I see, every little bit of metal in that car, like the clamps, anything metal basically, had a layer of rust over it. So that made me not want to buy it. I took it for a test drive. It drived fine, minus the fact that the brakes were a bit crap. So I said no to that car. Well, probably a few weeks later, I went to view another one. This was just over an hour away. Same spec as the last one, but it was in silver and it had a really nice baseball leather interior. It looked good minus the fact that it was silver and I really didn't want another silver car. So I took it for a test drive and that pretty much was the end of that. It wouldn't boost past 4,000 RPM. I didn't know what was up with it. The guy said it could be the N75 valve and he has a spare, but I didn't want to, I didn't, I just didn't want to risk that in case it was the actual turbo that had blown or something else, which was a major problem. I went home with nothing. And it was at this point where it was, it was outside, it was getting rainy again, it was getting cloudy. So I thought I'm really not going to bother because you know, if it's summer in Britain, it's not going to last. And at this point I had already got the money out to buy a car because I, I thought I was going to buy that silver car. And then the next car I, I saw on eBay was a Corrado. And for those who know me personally, that's, that's a car that I would love to own one day, but because I can't really daily it. It was a 1995 Corrado VR6, the same blue that I liked. All the electronics worked, so the sunroof, the spoiler, the windows, I think the seat belts are electric or something. Everything worked in it. There was no problems with it at all. And it was probably, I, th I think if I remember correctly, it was going for around 3,000 pounds and that was only about 20 miles away. I was messaging this guy back and forward. You know, I was really interested in this car. He sent me a video of it of a walk around and he started up, everything was perfect about it. Being honest and being real, could I afford, how old is it? 29, 28 year old car? Could I afford to run that as a daily? Uh, no, <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, no, I couldn't. So I left it 
and I didn't go I didn't go view it I didn't want to because it was an old car um, it was non-turbo so I couldn't tune it or anything I couldn't do anything really for the channel yeah I could buy it and then stick it around the back for another 10 years but then what would be the point in that? And at this point, I was then going to give up looking. I was still doing this series, so I thought, okay, I'll put my money back in the bank, and I'll... Yeah, I think this was just before I, I drove the first R32. I was going to put my money back in the bank, because being realistic, I couldn't afford an R32 yet. For, for a nice one, that's not going to break on me. I don't mind small things, but I couldn't afford an R32. I know, a few days after I drove the purple modified one, and my battery's about to die, so I'm just going to change the battery over. Here we go, we're back, battery's changed. Where was I? Yeah, so this was a few days after driving the purple R32. I was going to put my money back in the bank and leave it until I don't know when. I knew I wanted a car, but I didn't know what I wanted to get. And then I'll look one more time. I'll go on eBay one more time just in case. And I found a car. I found... I, I just found one. It was cheap. It looked in good condition. I called up the guy, the seller. I asked if there was any underlying problems that I should know about before coming to view it. And he said... He pretty much said no, apart from the things that he'd already said. So I was like, okay, I'll go and view it. I took it for a little drive around the block and it seemed perfect. For the price, for the price it was going for and for the condition it was in, the cam belt had been done at 75,000 miles and this car was on 115,000 miles. At, at, this, at this time of seeing that, I didn't think about it, but the water pump hadn't been done. Yeah, I didn't think anything of it, but I'm just letting you guys know the water pump hadn't been done at that time. Oh, and Duffy's come to join. You're right, Duff. You coming up? Coming in. Look. Who's that? Who's that? So I bought this car and I was happy with the price that I got it for. Thank you to Carl for driving me to these places to go and view the cars. And that's the end of that. I bought a new car. Thanks, guys. Bye. I wish, I wish it went like that. 10 minutes after buying the car on the drive home, uh, you know, I was testing it. Everything seemed fine with it. It was boosting properly. It got up to temperature. It was fine and then it flashed up it was just the coolant logo flashed up and i looked to the temperature and it was on 130 degrees which was hot it was overheating like mad so i got out opened up the bonnet to see that the coolant tank the coolant in the tank had risen all the way up and there was a small leak underneath the car and you're gonna sit there and you're gonna behave yeah okay i was already in a forum for that car group on facebook so i posted in the fa in the facebook group and they everyone Pretty much everyone instantly told me, put it, send it back to the seller. Head gasket, uh, overheating like that is a head gasket. Just send it back. And I was like, there's no other signs of it being a head gasket. Will you decide what you're doing, cat? No, I called up the guy and he told me, he told me he didn't know anything about it. Um, I told him that it was a leak, blah, blah, blah. Long story short, that's when he said that the uh, the water pump hadn't been done. And I was, I was like, well, that's clearly it then. This guy was contempt on it being the thermostat. Thermostats get um, get stuck open on this particular engine. So anyway, I called up the RAC because, you know, if it's going to keep overheating like this, it, I need to get it on a trailer home. RAC came. This was, bearing in mind, I called them at about half one in the afternoon. RAC came at about probably two or half two to look at it. Uh, and he kept over revving the engine, trying to work out what it was. And he just kept looking at it as if to just waste time. He kept doing the same thing over and over again, just to make sure they're overheated. I, I don't know. I don't know why, but he kept doing the same thing over and over again, and then said, it's probably, it's either the thermostat or the, or the water pump. And I was just thinking, it's definitely the water pump. Can't, it can't not be with that, because I, ha I don't think it's even been changed once. So apparently the fins go and they snap on this car or something. So he then said that he needs to call someone to tow it home because it's just not safe to drive. He probably called someone at about half two because he had to go on his lunch break. He couldn't do it because he had to go on his lunch break. Carl then had to go home, leaving me and Lucy stuck in my new car. I didn't want to keep him waiting. So yeah, he, he had to go to work. Yeah, me and Lucy were stuck in this new car from half two until the guy with the trailer showed up at about Half nine at night. This is my new car and we've been sat. I've driven it for 10 minutes and we're still waiting for RAC to call to come and tow her. I do not rate RAC, please. I don't know what's the best uh, recovery service there are, but from my two experiences with RAC, the first one we waited four hours and the next one we waited about, I don't know, seven hours for this guy to come. And then the guy took it, right, so it took us about just over an hour to get to that place. It took him, we got home at half 11 at night. It took him over like two and a half hours to get home. No idea how. So that's that story. That's that's what happened with my new car.
I haven't confirmed that it's a water pump, but it will be getting fixed in the next few days. That's that's the, the story with what's up with this car. It's been around the side of my house. I've had a look at it and the problems that I've... Oh, actually, no, I'm going to save the problems for another video. I think it's just time that you guys saw my new car. Should we go view it? Should we go view it, Duff? Oh, she's already off. Before I reveal it, I just want to say it's honestly been hilarious. Listen and just reading what you guys are guessing what this car is. I took a picture of this front grille. I took a picture like that and the puddle was there. And you guys from this, you guys were guessing all over the shot. You kept it German. So most of you got that part correct. A few of you were was set on it being an R32. Then Jake Fletcher, I'm just giving you, you were wrong, but I'm giving you a shout out anyway. You were absolutely certain it was a Cupra R. I can confirm it's not a Cupra R. It's not a Seat. It's not a Volkswagen. It is an Audi. I'm just gonna reveal it. I don't know what, I don't know what angle to reveal it from. I think I'll, I'll just do the front. Let's go. I'm just gonna reveal it like this. Here we go. It's in the background. Yes, I bought an Audi TT Roadster. 225 with a KO4 turbo. Roll the cinematics. Before you all jump on the hay train, I'm not keeping this car long. I got, like I said, I got this car for cheap. So the plan is, it's a nice convertible, drive it for the summer, and then hopefully make some money off it once I fix the, f the few things that are wrong with it. I'm gonna reveal what's what's needed and everything in the next video. But yeah, I'll take you for a quick tour. The rear of this car is my favorite just because of the twin exit exhausts and the way it sits. The interior of these cars are so funky and weird. The overall condition of this car is all right. It needs a clean. It's got my grubby hands on it. Uh, there's a few scratches up here which I've noticed and the only small thing is a dent here but we've got a new dent, got a new arch to swap for that. But apart from that, it is a pretty clean car. I wouldn't say it's a, a good looking car, it's just very... Audi went through a phase with this Mark 1. It's not It's not a good looking car, but it is a fun, it is a funny car and it's a, it's a fun car to be in. Honestly, you sit in this, it sits so low down. Yeah, this is the interior. Uh, 116,000 miles on the clock. Clocks are broken, but that's one of the problems. Uh, you can see the miles per, gallon, miles per hour clocks are a bit off. But apart from that, um, that does that does go down. But yeah, I don't want to reveal too much, but this is just sort of, this is it. Um, yeah, convertible. I'm not going gonna, gonna to put the roof down. I'll put pictures up, but just because, you know, it's um, not on. And I don't want to make the battery flat. I don't want you guys to be disappointed with this car. Obviously, it's my decision, and I know I knew I wanted this car, but... At the same time, you guys are the ones that are keeping this channel alive. Stop the video, I'm editing this right now, but I just wanted to quickly jump in to say a huge thank you to anyone who's purchased any merch from me. A couple of pounds for the stickers or for the merch or the hoodies or t-shirts, they help me out so much. You don't know how how massively you're supporting me with this with these types of things. It's not much, but it's something. And they're the things that I need at the moment. If you've purchased anything from me, thank you so much. Make sure you send me a picture on Instagram once you've received it, once the sticker's on your car or if you're wearing any merch and I'll shout you out because you, you're all absolute legends. If you're interested in buying some merch or stickers or whatever, the link's in the description to my Big Cartel website. Once everything's sold out, I'm not going to be getting any more for a while just because it's it's so inconsistent. So once these sell out, that's going to be it for a long time. So yeah, if you want to grab something, link's in the description. Back to the video. I won't be keeping this car for long. I just want to fix it up. There's a few, like I already said, there's a, there's a few things wrong with it. Fix that up, hopefully make some money at, at the end of maybe July, probably. Around the around July, I think I'll be looking to sell it. But yeah, the Mark IV is staying. When I first bought this car, I was thinking maybe I might sell the Mark IV. But hell no. <laughs> After this broke down on me, and then waiting for about three hours for the RSE to come initially, there was a McDonald's 10 minutes down the road. We were stuck in some country lane. And there was a McDonald's a 10 minute drive away, but it was a 40 minute walk. If we knew that the RAC were going to take that long to come to us, then we would have walked. But at this time, I said, fuck it, I am going to McDonald's because I'm hungry. Started the car and the battery was dead. And that is the worst feeling to ever have. You know, you know this, but I just want to say thank you to Lucy so much for being there with me. She kept me calm and she kept me... You know, I was stressing out about it and she could see that, but she was thankfully really calm about it all. 
apart from being a bit cold and hungry, battery was flat. So in the end, we ordered a pizza and we gave we gave special instructions to the pizza man. And what a legend, George at Topps Pizza. You are an absolute legend. It's it's a nice car. It is honestly a nice car. It could do with a clean on the outside. All Audi TT smell the same. Every single car that I've been in, it smells weird. It smells just like a weird car. And I don't know where the fuse box is either. I thought it would have been in the side here, like my golf, but it's not. So if someone could tell me where the fuse box is, that would be great. Yeah, thank you, Lucy. Uh, you're the best girlfriend I could ever ask for. Yeah, Mark IV is staying, uh, so don't go anywhere. Whoever's staying for the Mark IV. There's gonna be less videos, of course, because I'm gonna be focusing on this car for now, but I am keeping the Mark IV for now, until I sell this car and then buy another car. <laughs> I don't I don't even know what I'm gonna buy. That's it, thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this whole talk. It was honestly a nightmare. It was, it was one of the longest and hardest days of my life. It was, it was tough to try and stay calm when you're in the middle of nowhere in a car that doesn't work, hungry and tired and everything like that. Oh, shout out to TT Matty as well for calling me up to tell me what could possibly be wrong with it. He told me about the secret code on here as well. The the reading on there was accurate and accurate to that and things like that, but. Yeah, so thank you to him, and thank you to everyone who's, um, if anyone's watching from the Mark 1 forum, thank you for your help in diagnosing what could possibly be wrong with it. And yeah, I'm going to go because this has been a very long video, but yeah, the next video I'll be talking about everything that's wrong with this car, and finding out how many faults it's got. I have scanned it and I know how many faults it's got, but yeah. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video.